In this video we're going to look at quadratic number patterns. Quadratic number patterns are number patterns where the second difference becomes constant. An example of a quadratic number pattern is given as follows. At a first glance it's not always clear whether it is a quadratic number pattern but what we then do is we look at the difference and so when finding the difference be sure to always use the value to the right minus the value to the left not the other way around so 15 minus 10 is 5 22 minus 15 is 7 and 31 minus 22 is 9 if those three numbers that we found were the same then that would be called a linear number pattern however as we can see those three numbers are not the same so we proceed to the next row where we carry on as what when we do the same as what we did in the first row and so that 7 minus 5 would give us 2 and 9 minus 7 is 2 and so when the second row becomes constant we call that a quadratic number pattern. Quadratic number patterns have the general formula tn is equal to a n squared plus b n plus c and this you must remember because they won't give you that on the formula sheet and there are two different ways to solve a b and c. I've seen some schools use a certain method and other schools use the other method. So in some of the schools they do the following and I think it's quite a good method it's it works quite well they look at this number two well, let me do this in a different color so they look at this two they look at the five and they look at the ten and then they have to remember the following three equations 2a is equal to 2 3a plus b is equal to 5 and then a plus b plus c is equal to 10 let me show you what I mean so you start from the bottom so there's your first equation 2a is equal to 2 so if you had to solve that you would divide by 2 and you would get a as 1 so now we've already found a then you would go up one level to 3a plus b and you would make that equal to 5 so I'm going to do that over here on the right where we already know the value of a and so you get that and so 3 plus b is equal to 5 you solve for b and you'd get that b is equal to 2 so now we have b and then the last equation would be this one over here where you would solve a plus b plus c is equal to 10 and so a would have a value of 1 b has a value of 2 and then c we don't know but then we can solve and you would get a value of 7 and so then we can write the final formula and so now we can fill in the final formula as tn is equal to a which is 1 so that's just going to be 1n squared plus 2n because b is 2 plus 7 because that is um, the value of c what I always suggest to students at this point is to test your formula so you look at the last value that they've given you that is position number 1 2 3 and 4 so you'll plug 4 into the place of n because that's what n stands for n stands for the position and we will see what the answer is so if you had to plug 4 into that equation being careful to use brackets wherever you see n you would get an answer of 31 which means that the formula does work and so that is correct I'm now going to show you the other method that the some of the other schools use if I have just shown the method that your school uses well then you can just skip this part and carry on to the next slide the beginning part is obviously still the same you still have to work out if it's a quadratic number pattern and the general formula is still going to be the same in fact the beginning part to find a is also the same so that'll also be 2a is equal to 2 all right so 2a is equal to 2 so a will still be equal to 1 here's where it becomes a little different we find the next thing we find is C and we the way we find C is we work out what this term would be over here so we call this the term 0 and so to do that you would have to have a look at this pattern over here and work out what the number would have been before the 5 well it's going down in twos 9 7 5 and so that would be a 3 and so what number would have to go in this green block so that when you add 3 you get an answer 
of 10. Well, that would have to be 7. And so C is 7. So then what we do is we fill in whatever we have so far. So that's A is just 1, so I'm not going to fill that in, plus BN plus 7. The last term, which is, well, the last letter, which is B, you find by substitution. So you choose any one of these. All right, so I'm going to choose the 22. The 22 is at position number 3. So 22 will go here because that's the actual value at that place. And then in brackets, I'll fill in the position, which is 3 squared plus B bracket 3 plus 7. You will then go and solve this equation for B. And then you can take, so, so I've just multiplied out, well, I've gotten rid of all the brackets. You then take all the numbers to the left hand side, for example. And that's going to give you 6 is equal to 3b. And then if you divide by 3, you're going to get an answer of b is equal to 2. And so your final formula will be tn is equal to n squared plus 2n plus 7, which is the same answer that we got in the previous method. So just to recap, there's two different ways to do it. Do the method that suits you, that, that you prefer, and you should get the same answer for both. Always be sure to check your answer at the end. Moving on to the first example. Here we've been given a quadratic number pattern where the numbers are 3, 4, 9 and 18. The first question just wants us to find the general formula. So that's what we did on the previous slide. So we've got the numbers 3, 4, 9 and 18. So we start by completing these differences. By the way, we call this first row, the 1, the 5, the 9, we call that the first difference row. Okay, And then we see 4 and 4. And so straight away we can see that it's constant in the second row, and so it is a quadratic number pattern. And so I'm going to use the first method I showed you in the previous slide, which is 2a equals to this number, 3a plus b equals to this number and a plus b plus c equals to this number. You don't have to use this method, you will still get the same answer at the end. So if we look at the first equation, we see that 2a is equal to 4, and so therefore, if you had to divide by 2, a would equal to 2. We then use 3a plus b equals to 1, but a is 2, so 3 times 2 is 6, plus b equals to 1, and if you had to solve that by taking the 6 to the right, you'll get b equals to minus 5. You can then do the a plus b plus c equals to 3, which I'm getting over here. And so a we said was 2, b is minus 5 plus c equals to 3, 2 minus 5 is minus 3, and so if you solve for c, you are going to get a value of 6. And so if we remember the general formula of a quadratic, we get a n squared plus b n plus c, and then we can fill in all our different values. So we said that a was 2, b was minus 5, and c is 6. And so that's the answer for part a of this question. Question b. What is the value of term 105? So what that, and this is where a lot of the students I tutor do um, find it a bit difficult to understand, is what's the difference between, so here they're saying, what is the value of term 105? So they, they, don't, they, they forget to understand, well, they, they battle to see, should they put the 105 by Tn, or should they put the 105 by N? Well, N, these n's, they stand for the position, and tn is the actual value at that position. So they're saying, what is the value of term 105? So that's position 105. So if you had to carry on with this pattern and you had to go to the 105th position, what is the value there? So what you would need to work out is tn, but we know that it's at position 105, Remember, these n's stand for position, and that you could simply go plug in on the calculator, and you would get an answer of 21,531. Moving on to question C. Next question says, which term has a value of 10,299? So now, there, 
the 10,299 is the actual value of Tn, but we don't know what the position is, so we don't know what n is, so we leave it out like that. Then we realize that there is a square, and so this is going to become a trinomial. So we have to get a zero on the left-hand side and move everything else to the right, and so that's going to be plus 6 minus 10,299. And so what you end up with is 0 is equal to 2n squared minus 5n minus 10, 2, 9, 3. Then this you'll solve using the quadratic formula. And if you had to plug all those values on in, into the quadratic um, formula, making sure that whenever you plug in the b, the a, and the c, you should always do it in brackets, you're going to get two answers. The one answer is going to be n is equal to negative 70 comma 5 or the other one will be 73. Now remember what n stands for. n is the position. You cannot have a negative position and so the answer is going to be n is equal to 73. So what that means is if you had to carry on going up to position number 73, so this is position 1, 2, 3, for if you had to get to the 73rd position, it would have a value of 10,299. That's the end of this video. Thank you for watching.